Hello, in this video we will discuss about the bone fracture and repair. So the bone fracture is due to the mechanical force, is the too much force will break the bone. So the breaking of the bone is um, um, is uh, scientific, scientifically known as the fracture. So a bone fracture which, uh, which varying in severity is the clinical term for broken bone. A bone will break if the force exerted on it and form a fall or impact or example for example uh, is stronger than the bone itself. So the stronger force will be affect the fracture of the bone. So the soon after the bone uh, undergoes a natural healing process, uh, there are five stages of the fracture healing process, which is uh, uh, we can explain in the uh, in, in below. We will discuss so. So the soon after the bone undergoes a natural healing. So the natural healing, so the bigger bone will uh, require the ta more time as compared to the smaller bone for the repair. So remember about that and that is the important things because the femur is a bigger bone. After the fracture of the femur take more time as well as the pelvis, pelvic, pelvis bone so, or other bones. So some bone for example the vertebral column will be when broken so it will uh, uh, repair is very uh, very difficult so here you can see this is the first after the break broken of bone will become a hematoma formation so the hema mean the blood and toma mean the clotting of the blood uh, formation will be occur during the break uh, the bone blood vessel are damages as well this creates a hematoma and this hematoma is the clotted blood that swells inside the bone tissue. So this is the first step for the hematoma formation after the broken of the bone. So the blood clot due to angiogenolysis. Angiogenolysis means the breakdown of the blood vessel. So after this the next step we will discuss that is the granulation tissue formation uh, and inflammation. So when the process of fracture blood vessels surrounding the bone rupture and release blood into the uh, injury site and this form hematoma and allow immune cell basically uh, immune cell uh, immune cell neutrophil uh, uh, macrophages and lymphocytes to inflate, infiltrate the tissue and release a multiple uh, growth factors and cytokines and angiogenesis and bone start to repair so here you can see the blood vessel and the medullary bone and compact bone when the damage of the compact bone you can see in this diagram to understand so the neutrophil as well as the basophil and the macrophage and dendritic cell will arrive into the fracture site so when the process of fracture blood vessel surrounding the bone rupture and release blood into the injury site and this form hematoma and allow immune cells, neutrophils, macrophage and lymphocyte to infiltrate the tissue and release a multiple, um, uh, multiple of growth factors and cytokines and angiogenesis will be occur in this way the blood vessel formation and bones start to repair and the bone will start to repair so the angiogenesis will be occur in this way the neutrophil macrophage basophil will arrive near the compact bone where the fracture site so, so okay here is the angiogenesis formation and via uh, angiogenesis and via a circulatory system the arrival of the innate uh, immune response so the innate immune cell will be arrive uh, as well as the uh, adaptive immune cells lymphocyte so this was the inflammation and granulation tissue formation so that is why the swelling of the bone fracture site will be occur due to the, that swelling swelling is due to the inflammation due to the rupture of the 
blood vessel will increase the inflammation and clear the inflammation side through in uh, innate immune cells so the innate immune cell will clear the inflammation because there are a lot of problem because when blood cell will be die so it will convert into the toxin if not clear so that is why the clearance is very important so this step is the second step granulation tissue formation and inflammation so the compact bone looking like this so the next step is important which that is known as the callus formation callus formation is basically not a hard but the soft a soft callus is formed and this here is a bone again i am drawing so the callus formation is due to the osteoclast and osteoblast activity we will discuss so here is the osteoclast and osteoblast this osteoclast is used for the resorption of the bone while the osteoblast is used for the bone formation so the deposition of calcium and phosphate fr phosphate from the blood into the bone fracture site while the osteoclast is used for the resorption of the calcium but it translocate the calcium as phosphate uh, into the bone fracture site for the deposition so a soft callus is formed callus is made of newly formed osteoblast and bone building cells and osteoclast is known as a bone resorption are the resorbing cell it is used for natural remodeling process and the capillaries are sporting blood uh, sporting the blood vessel connect into the callus as the uh, rebuilding process continues and calcitonin will be produced which that will be inhibit the osteoclast reabsorption of the bone while the deposition of the calcium and phosphate from the blood due to the osteoblast convert into the mature osteocyte and in this way first of all the callus formation will be occur this is a messy lump or messy clotting which that is store the calcium and phosphate to form a soft callus but it will be it is the precursor of the hard bone and next step is the consolidation so this consolidation is the basically the new bone build to the uh, point is soft soften soften and bone called woven bone because it is the um, network like structure uh, but during its process stage of feeling a stronger uh, stronger type of bone called lamellar bone and basically uh, replaces the woven bone so the lamellar bone will replace the woven bone it means the woven bone will be disappear at last and the uh, lamellar bone will be occur so continue continuously deposition of calcium and phosphate will become a hard bone so that is the major reason and the next last one is a bone remodeling it whole process require a uh, four week to years it's depend on the bones and age if the age is more so required more time while the age is less required less time the lamellar bone ultimately fill the fracture site and a line in uh, direction of the external forces on the bone this stage can last any uh we are from a few months to a few years so after the uh, bone fracture will be uh, a disposition so that we can position by the physician so we can position that and we can adjust and after the adjust we can plus um, plus the so here is a stop smoking will lead to increase the bone repair and adhere to Uh, adhere to your treatment plan will lead to increase the bone repair is due to the medicine use as well as other things and talk to your doctor continuously for um, checking the bone repair formation and on the other hand the try to arg argumenting fracture healing so in this way on the other hand the uh, eat balanced diet 
that is very important because contain a rich calcium and phosphate and that food is very important as well as the osteocyte is made up of protein so that is why the protein is also important amino acid essential amino acid and non essential amino acid and on the other hand the uh, water uh, uh, water intake as well as watch your calcium level on the basis of milk consumption so that's all thing is the bone fracture repair here so thanks